Okay. Um, bear with you here. Um, so welcome, Pam. And this is your commission. We're just missing John, although he's stepping off in February. So there we go. So we have no public forum. Uh, we do have a, a bit of correspondence. So are there any comments or any anything anyone wants to say about the correspondence? Yeah, should we be at this meeting tomorrow? Uh, which one? What are the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the neighbors? The yeah, the, um, yeah, maybe we'll be here. Longer. I think it's the lead room. I'm not sure, but I think it's the lead it room. It says that. Yeah, lead room. Um, yeah, I can make I can tell a little bit about it when we get on there. Okay, do you, yeah. do you think we should be here? Did you hear from people? I'm gonna be, yes. I'm gonna come okay, good. Too. just to see what's going on and watch the it's at 5 30. If you can go, I guess are they are there. they against this for this? Or the two comments we got uh, questions. If one has questions about it, the other one is doesn't want it to go where, where it's going to go, where the plan is for it to go. It's not even that tall. Mm -hmm. but, well, I mean, this goes back to when we did the beach the first time, too. They didn't want the trees. I mean, we had a lot of, they didn't want the playground. You had to see the fight right. when we had to put a playground in. So, and the, the two comments were because people aren't going to be able to be there. They, they aren't able to come, so I want to submit their comments. So, okay. one of them is in writing, which I have, I think, in the, mm -hmm. what's that on that? But she, she, I have it. Um, in my words, it's all calling by me. Okay. All right. So I'll if you can attend, uh, I'll be here. Don't but if you can, and I believe it's going to be as quick as we can because the people have. Oh yeah, I know. I guess we're getting another rain storm, storm tomorrow. Morning, so yeah. Uh, yeah. So yeah. it'll keep the crowd down. Any other comments about the uh, correspondence? Uh, so remember, there was um, this was in here because I asked about the. Last month we discussed about the lighting of the fields and we did it for one day as, and got all the kids out and everything. And apparently this was the report. So this defense thing, this was the the child's report. On that. That's why that's in there. Um, so any other comments or questions about the correspondence? So you all have uh, looked at the meeting minutes of the December meeting. So if I could have someone make a motion to approve. Second. Yeah. Seconds. Okay. Discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, we're going to table the approval of the expenditures is they're not fully complete this month, first time ever. But it's just been a really weird month for everybody in December for um, Jennifer and Rick and everything. So because there's a couple of the numbers are not totally accurate, we're going to table that and do it next month. Okay, they're not big numbers. They're both it's it's kind of silly because it's all been spent anyway, and we're just approving after the fact. But it's uh, but until we have it properly laid out, not in the munis. But the way we normally get it, well, I think we should talk with Jen a little bit about that as well, because I was, she was here on Friday. And she says it takes her four or five hours to take this and transform it. So there has to be a better way of doing this. So she okay. and I are talking about that. So we may get it in a different format, but. Okay, well, that'll be, I guess, up to Pam to work with Jennifer uh, on that. Um, a lot of hours spent doing yeah, I mean, I, I know the Munis system from being on the Golf Commission. Right. It is weird. It is kind of like everything's backward. But um, but once you're used to looking at it, you can look at it. But because these numbers are not exactly right. accurate, we're going to move on right. and table it to the next one. Um, so director's reports, we haven't really had time to read everything. So um, if you want to take the time to have a look through, and Rick, if you want to put any... Um, Make any comments about anything? Uh, well, well, mostly the month. I, I was just it was budget, 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 budget. Um, but um, I felt bad. I told Laura this was my last meeting. It's the first time ever I didn't do a director's report, so I wrote it today. So I gotta have a director's report. 
32 years. Was abbreviating because basically everything I did was budget for the last mm -hmm. month. And so there's a few other things here. The, the dog park issue. I mean, there, there was a streaming match was going on between a couple of people and, and they, they both ended up contacting me. One came in and talked to me. There's a police report. Uh, wow. and, really? Uh, it's it, it's <laughs> uh, so I, I addressed it and said basically at this point roll up. <laughs> I said be adults. There's not much we're doing about this at this point. Yeah. But anyway, that's a some time. Um, and you can have. <laughs> you didn't hear anything about the dog park. I know. You just kind of go with the flow and get a space that was at the dog park or the the uh, adult. adult oh, the dog. So there was dog a park. conflict between people. Uh, it was actually there's more people than dogs this time. It's been so positive. It's it's shame to do that. Uh, there, are, there are issues you don't hear about all, but yeah. you know, I just deal with. But um, what well, was the issue this time? So there was somebody who wanted to enter and had two huskies, and they're you know a little scary looking, and they were the other end like growling, snarling, or whatever. At this other person was trying to go out, and they're in that holding area there, the holding yeah. pen. Oh. And so maybe not nicely, they asked the lady to move. There were dogs. She, she said, anyway, she didn't. There was an argument. Police were called. No fisticuffs or anything. But um, I mean, it was silly. I mean, it, it may have been the attitude, the, the way people asked it. I mean, if you could say, hey, look, do you mind just move your dogs out? Because I'm a little nervous and I'll walk out. So you're not and, supposed to be in the holding pen with other dogs. The idea. Well, they weren't. They were, they were coming in. One wanted to go out, but the one wanted to go out. Oh. The dogs, these huskies were too close. Pretty. The. the Owner on the other side felt they were being pretty aggressive. Oh. They were worried walking through when their yeah. dog asked if they wouldn't mind just moving aside. Yeah. And and anyway, it, it got blown up. Thanks. Thank you. No, I guess the Adams B field, though, we, we, we talked today with, or uh, yesterday, last week with Dave, uh, um, the, the uh, public works director, and it's it's not going to happen in the winter. I, I emailed Adrian um, from the. Andrea. Uh, Parents group that came to us today emailed that it's probably not going to happen in the winter. The weather's just too iffy. You know, snow last week, heavy rain to, uh, Wednesday, freezing cold. It'll happen. It'll be done. Eventually, I just don't see it happening now. That's why I always say, "You do it in November. That's the time to do it." But it couldn't be done in November. On that note, I do know that the parents, as they were. Committed to supporting with funds, and they were successful in raising the amount. Excellent. Good. Nice. Yeah, she, yeah, she has to put the check in, so I make sure it gets put in the right account. So uh, uh, I need to hear back from Anna on that. And that's an agenda item on the bottom. So, okay. Anything else, Rick? That's it. All right. Any more? Thank you, note uh, on the, to all the commissioners. Oh. Thank you, Rick. Really, I was I was totally touched by your going away party, and you're just honored to know you. Really? It was a good party. It was a great party. Yeah, yeah they exaggerated a lot. Yeah, <laughs> We've got lots of proclamation. Yeah. We're going to have a statue. He's going to have a, we're going to have, I'm working on a statue on the green. Yeah. <laughs> They're doing your happy dance. Doing one of the budget dances. <laughs> Put it in my gazebo. Yeah. Right. That means it's never happening. <laughs> Okay, so moving on to the other reports, are there any questions, comments, or anything? Have you all had a chance to review them? Questions on any of these? No, other than that, lunches are still large for senior lunches. It's been great. It's been great. Excellent. Yeah. All right. You will see on Tony's report, there are a couple of training programs that the guys have gone through. We have always looking for going to train for the guys. Um, and there's one that snowplow, um, which they, they know how to snowplow, but it was up, up you know, updating trading. And um, there was another one on, uh, what's the other one? There's another one. Oh, MS4. That has to do with uh, uh, proper fertilizing, um, the proper amount of salt, to use, things like that to help reduce the chance of things getting into the waterways. Yeah. Okay, we went along to uh, oh, committee reports. Standing fields. Um, no meeting in December, uh, but I but I, I did get appointed a jury second to serve on the fields committee. So, <laughs> <laughs> so 
Uh, I'll be the committee. All right, Green. The I mean, committee, um, the, uh, mostly just talking about the possibility of more benches on the green and, and uh, pods like the three, the two pods that we have. Those are Doing nice. some more of those. Uh, but as people come forward and say they're interested in donating, to, I mean, those benches were purchased, other, other than the one for Carl Balistrace, were purchased with ARPA funds. So I think right now the Green Committee is going to get word out that if you want to, the only problem is they don't own people's name to go on a bench. So for Carl Bell Stracy did it, you know, because of Carl, you know, it was Carl, yeah. I think it's the walkway there, but they're pretty, Green Committee is pretty adamant about not publicizing stuff like that. If people want to donate it, do it, and, you know, you tell your friends, but they don't want to have a plaque on it. Yeah. Do they have a limit? They haven't, no, they haven't said that, but I think eventually all the ones eventually are going to get replaced probably, you know, because they're the old, old style. The wood is good. When we put that wood on there, it's Ipe wood, which will last 30 or 40 years. Um, but the concrete forms that they're attached to, they crack over time. Um, and so, you know, that's why the, the pods that we created are separate from the existing benches. So they don't look way out of place, like old and new, you know. So there are two other, two or three other sidewalks where some more of those pods could be created. So there is, is room for more pods. Yeah. yeah. Without it looking too crowded. I, I th there's room to do it. Scariest. That's the main thing they talked about the last meeting. And land act. Land act. Uh, tell you about one project that um, is moving forward, uh, and they're going to have a open public forum on January sixteenth, and it's Sullivan property, which I'm trying to remember. I believe. It's not yeah. Is it that place? That is what? Um, mm -hmm. or, no, I thought it was. It's up, it's up, uh, no, it's on Tanner Marsh. Tanner Marsh. Yeah. 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 I'm trying to remember which, which project it was up that, but it's yeah. um, something it, that was on that. It, that's been going on for a long time. time. I know. Yeah. It's yeah. Thing. They're going to actually have a public meeting so I can mention it. Um, yeah. uh, how many yeah. acres? How many acres now? <laughs> uh, I don't have data here with yeah. me. So Pam yeah, Landax I, usually you get nothing from them because yeah. most of their so, meetings is in executive sessions. Confidential. It's all confidential. So usually it's no no report. Yeah. No report. Mm -hmm. So feel honored. We got our first <laughs> land back. <laughs> 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 I have to go ahead and say it was okay to talk about. It. But of course I didn't So you said you said that there's a meeting schedule? January sixteenth. January sixteenth meeting at let me see what time. It's at town hall. Fifteen <laughs> AM. Yes. A lot of those are that time. You well, that's the select sixteenth. Yes, Tanner Marsh, right? Everybody else is yeah. So Tanner Marsh, that's the one behind the diner, right? Yes. Has the yes. red bar yeah. and everything. Yeah. yeah, that's the that's the one. I'm I'm sure that, unless they've gotten another Sullivan property I since I left out now. Um, but good. no, it's been one that's been on the agenda. So that's land acquisition. So we'll go to unfinished business and we have the ever popular Jacob septic improvements. Still not approved. <laughs> uh, so um, Sonia Marino, the town health director, and I met with Matt today to try to move this forward a little bit. And we're, we're looking at that something and uh, going to um, a contractor to share the, the plans that we have. There are some tweaks have to be made on it, but Sonia knows what they are. And so if we can meet with the contractor and, and you know, look, can you do this by adding this? Give us an idea of what it's going to cost. Um, then depending on what it is, we, we may go to the board of selectmen to see if they would waive the bid procedure. Um, because there was only one contractor responded when we looked at this back in the spring. Wow. Um, so I asked for permission to speak with them. I did call there today. I didn't get a call back. I was hoping to have something more to give tonight, but um, and, and I talked to Pam about this. We met last Saturday for a couple hours. We're working on the transition, but that's one thing that's out there still. But um, I'm still trying to push it <laughs> and get something more going before I'm done. It's going to be called the Rick Maynard septic. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that too. We'll get you a flag for that too. They don't get this done by some. Are going to be pumping this that's out every that's week? That's, so that's, so my, long. that's what we talked about. I said it's got to got to be done. It should go out to bid like now, 
Um, winter is a good time to do it. The prices are probably better. These guys can't be real busy right now. You have to worry about the, the beach sand freezing. They could dig it. Um, yeah, as Laura knows, this is probably one of the most frustrating things I've ever been involved with trying to get this done. One would think it would have been easy. Well, that's all right. We'll just keep it on unfinished business and transition it over to Pam, and then it'll get done in one month. And <laughs> no pressure, Pam. Uh, at the splash pad. Uh, I think so. If anyone can attend, uh, I, thought, I think you saw it in one of the communications that the the donor is going to give up to hundred thousand dollars for it. Balance, we think it's around 150. Balance will be between ARPA and Bowman Health. So, um, yeah, it's going to. So, they, so they do think they, they've come up with a cost for it, basically. The, the estimate's 150. It might be less than that, but that's what, what the estimate is. Really? Okay. Uh, how high up the ground is going to be? Like, how high, how high up the ground? You know, right? Would it be the same? It's the same as the one that's there. It's the same as the uh, picnic shelter, so eight or 10 feet, same height as the sh picnic shelter. But it's not a tent, it's like sails, like wispy sort of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can see through. And the, and the reason we do this meeting is so that it prevents a big chaotic meeting at zoning and planning. Yeah, and I, I think, you know, if neighbors, if they see what it looks like, and it's a courtesy, We you know, they, they live there. We want to make sure that they see what we're looking to do. It's a, it's a change uh, to the property that they've been looking at for a lot of years. And we want them to see what it's going to look like and have a better feel for it. Um, they certainly still have the right to go to planning and zoning, you know, for the public hearing. Um, but we're hoping that once they see it, and as, as you folks all did, you, you had questions out of you, so I said, wow, this looks nice. Um, you know, we, we need to provide more shade down there. And this is a way to do it, and we got somebody to pay for it. And it's, it's not an eyesore. I think it's actually going to look really nice. So hopefully once they see it. The letter was an image or of what we're doing sent to them, or just that there's a meeting to discuss what uh, we're doing. We have it I, think was, I think it was just a letter that went out. I only saw the letter. Yeah, I yeah, didn't we see the a, um, We just said we have a meeting for the proposed shade structure, you know, it's, and where it is. Because uh, if they haven't seen it, yet, I mean, it. you know, if there's they negative they about it now, more more than 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 what it actually is, that could be right. the problem. That, that's what that, and again, that's why Will's going to present what it looks like so that hopefully people will see it and say, wow, it, yeah, it's not so bad. Right. Up year round, or does that get taken down? Holes well, yeah, but the, the fabric comes down, and if it's just a big windstorm, it can come down too. Okay, basketball court lighting. Uh, that's um, it, it's in the state. Um, it was supposed to have been delivered uh, December eighteenth. I actually called the company, who the contractor who has it, to find out when they're going to put it in. I, they didn't call me back, um, but they have it. Um, just they got to put it in. <laughs> they in the state from Iowa. Uh, it's Moscow lights from Moscow. And who's who, who's putting it in? Okay. They're a subcontractor of Moscow. Okay, so uh, this is for transition. So who gets the light and does it go to the electric people, Chuck Electric, and then they come and put it in? Or yeah, so, so it's not is it like coming it's, here to the foyer or? It's, it's, it's not here. It's going to be at the um, emergency services, the basketball court there. Right. And so um, the lights are, it's not lights, it's the, the control. Right. Um, there can be a remote control. We can do it by telephone. Turn them on. No, but where, whoever's installing it, where's the package coming? Well, Here, they, have it, they have it at wherever they are. Shock Electric. They oh, okay. Have they have so you're waiting for Shock Electric to, to come it. and do it. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah. got it. I, I missed that. I'm sorry. I think I zoned out. Um, the Adam B field conversion. I think we discussed that already. So yeah, that probably spring. Probably spring. Um, Let's just skip operating budget goes to skate park ramps. And then we'll come right back to operating budget if that's okay. So I, I think I put that on here only because the gentleman came last week and mentioned some things he thought were safety issues. And we addressed those. Uh, one of was um, uh, one of the bottoms of the ramps was, was lifted up a little bit. Uh, Tony went up there with a loader and he pressed it back down. Um, one other thing, whatever it is, Tony addressed both of them. Being in the middle. Was the thing in the middle of the box in the middle? Uh, yeah, that's right. That's that was one of them. So we uh, I don't know if it's back yet, but we brought it to Public Works. They thought they could fix it. It was just a, it was they they had to weld something. Um, usually, you know, you try not to um, 
if you mess with something that's been pre-built, you generally don't do it. But this this is something we that we knew we could do. It was not going to affect the integrity. This, the integrity of it. It would make it better, actually. Okay. So um, the public works can do that. I don't know that's back up there yet. Abby's right. And you, you, um, I guess you also said that you spoke to the American Ramp Company. Yeah, they they said that the down, spacing um, is fine and not to work. I did, but not. No, I'll tell you, this is this is like one of the worst <laughs> unprepared things. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, I spoke with the American Ramp Company about. Um, those issues, but also I think he wanted us to move them a little bit to make more room around the back. And they said the distance we have is good, and we should just keep it that way. So, um, and I, I, I and I did. I think I told the you know, I forgot his man, the name, the young man. That um, in a few years we have in the budget for replacing all that anyway. Right. It's in our capital budget. Right. We have his name. I think he must. I think his name is in the minutes um yeah and i'm glad because he as i said before the meeting he did such a wonderful job both times he came he was just so he was to the point and he gives skateboarders a wonderful name <laughs> so all right so let's move to the big one the operating budget which is the proposed budget was in our pack yep so instead of going through it line by line i don't think we need to do that hopefully you looked at it and you this do you have questions? Do you have anything you need to discuss? Um, now there's one number that's going to change, which is a salary number. Yeah. Yeah. It's about three thousand dollars difference. Uh, so more than that, everything's the same. And you can find most everything you want to know about the budget in the, in the highlights section. Kind of gives you the synopsis without pouring over every figure. Um, and we thank you, Rick, very much for doing this. I know it's a tough time trying to wind up and leave us. And uh, so we really appreciate you getting this done. Um, the hearing is next. We present it to... It's Wednesday. I didn't get a time from... Uh, right, so it's not... A week from Wednesday, I think. 17th. My, so my last day is not the 16th. <laughs> Got pushed back. Uh, okay. um, ready. Let me see if she she was going to email me the time. I, I didn't see it. No, I didn't see it again. So you will be there with with Todd going or or Tony. Yeah, Tony. Tony will go. I'll show up. I just sit there. Yeah. Oh, I always went. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just sitting there. I wanted to be there. Well, I'll, uh, I can email you. I'll let you know. Um. All right. Now, is this something we need to to vote on that we're presenting this, or we kind of, or is this just? You can you voted on everything but utilities and salaries because we, we have did that last because we don't right. have a lot of control yeah. over it. Right. Okay. So we don't need to to vote or anything. So is everybody all right with the way and this has been presented? presented? Yeah. Thanks. So four point. Did I see four point something percent? I hear it. So that's it. So well, I, well, that just to comment the revenue the revenue. Is impressive, I thought, from the beach passes and the revenues. Yeah, even even the lunch revenues. So, but well, well the, the food revenue. We increased it, and, and the breakfast. The breakfast have the breakfast the off and the rotary. Lot. Well, there's a lot more people coming to breakfast, and the rotary's attending now twice a month. Is it rotary twice a month here? Uh, no, four times. Four times. They're four times a month. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Okay. Except this past month, there were two days they couldn't be here, but uh, we didn't have any room. But right. Only One breakfast, three lunches. Excellent. So okay. how, how the boom rentals are doing so well? Seven thousand. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're going back up. We got a lot, a lot of birthday parties. Uh, you know, we were, the, the seven thousand budget that was like right after COVID. We were way way up. Twenty three. Yeah. You just it's didn't know how they're going to bounce back. Yeah. So um, okay. you can see our action for 22, 23 was 18,000. Yeah. Our budget for that year was 19,000. We were close. Yeah. The budget for this year was 11,000. So we didn't know we were going to make 18 the year before. And so we're, you know, we're putting it back at about 18. So people finally added their pajamas and emerging from their homes after all these years. So, well.
Excellent. Okay. So um, next we're going to go to new business. And I guess we'll between Brad and Rick, the Shoreline Greenway Trail. Um, we discussed this briefly, I think, at the last meeting about them helping to put a path right. a, a trail around Bittner Park or in there. But I'll let you go for it to explain it. Right. Well, active members of the Shoreline Greenway Trail are very interested in biking and looking for off-street biking in town, which there really isn't any. So some of our members met with Rick a while ago and proposed putting a loop around Bittner. Thinking was when the older kids are playing ball, the younger kids can have a bike path to go and it would be wide enough so someone in a wheelchair or, or parents with strollers could also use it. And then meeting with Rick, we sort of expanded it a bit to go into the woods a bit and probably go up right now to the uh, golf course kiosk in the woods. So part of it would be in the woods. And then eventually as a second stage, maybe getting through to Baldwin because there are trails that go to Baldwin, but you can't really take a stroller or, or bike them too well. So um, after speaking with Rick, I wound up also speaking with Ellen, who was very eager to help with the grant writing on this, because there's some state grants coming up in the next couple of months, and we're all going online to some webinars in the next few weeks. And then I met with our town planner, and Archen, who worked on um, in New Haven with a lot of the trail there. Um, very frustrating work, which, which building trails are. And also Matt Howey, who's a very avid cyclist, and he was very enthusiastic as well. So and because of our support and our interest in this, and we have no real Shoreline Greenway Trail in town, this would give us something to do and to work on. We'd like to be involved in helping getting grant money and raising money, because right now, I know there's no dollar amount, but it was assumed that it would all be paid for by the town. So we'd like to see if we can help raise some grant money for it. And there may be some grant money that's out there that's available to an organization and not available to a town. You know, we're going to look into doing multiple grants if we can. And we'd also like to be involved with the design of it and the construction and so forth of it, just to help out doing it, because we're very interested in it. So I'd like to make a motion to approve Shoreline Greenway Trail, working with Guilford Park and Rex employees to apply for grant funding, overall design and construction of the new bike hiking path in Bitna Park. So we make the motion, we'll second it, and then we'll have discussion. Okay. So somebody, I'll, I'll make the motion. He made the motion. Oh, he made the motion. Oh, made the motion. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Let's do it again. You did. You did. You, did. you said I need a motion. So I'll second the motion. All right. Go. All right, go ahead. Discuss. So, well, I was just saying, so I apologize. I think. I don't remember this conversation from last meeting. If we actually talked about, it. I walked in a little late. Maybe I missed it at the beginning. Um, so it you're been more at the cap of my. I don't know, or maybe it was just. I don't know. Whatever it was, it was back a little bit. Maybe it was just. I don't remember. Okay. Okay. I don't remember. Okay. Good. I'm so glad you're saying. That. Um, but anyway, so based on what you were saying, I'm gathering you are part of the Shoreline Greenway. Yes. Trailer, trailer, yeah, greenway trail. Yeah. Okay, so see, the way you were speaking about that. So, um, okay, so you're coming to. So it's kind of like you're wearing two hats here right. because you're coming to us as part of the commission and right. working with it on that. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's interesting. And then, but this is not part of the short. I no, know, it won't be part of the greenway trail. trail. Is it part of the greenway trail? No, it won't. So then, I'm but, just, but I'm we just, as an organization in Guilford are interested in doing something. So and we would, you know, okay, so, so you wouldn't be calling this as part no, of no, it's, no, it's it's a total trail. separate thing, right? right. Okay, so that's I where know. I was confused, okay. right? Yeah, right. Right. So right. Just right. Be your support, our support. I didn't right. think the showing. Okay, and do we? Isn't there already a a um? The, the, isn't there always already a walk around? Or was there used to be a it, walk around? Paved with just around a softball field. Yeah. Field. Uh -huh. But right. we met up there, we walked around all from the soccer field all around all the fields. It's probably at least three quarters of a mile. But behind what's called Bitter A and Bitter B, Little League Fields, it's pretty close to wetlands there. I mean, yeah. maybe 20 feet probably. And so it, it may be possible. It's not impossible. There's a lot of hoops, you know. Yeah. But one of the other suggestions, so after we met, I told Brandis, I went went up to the uh, this golf course, a kiosk, and there's a trail that goes right from there all the way behind the bleachers at uh, the soccer field and comes back, could come back down on this south side of the soccer field. If it's not feasible to go around all the fields, 
maybe instead do this, go up there, and it, it's going to be just as long, if not longer, and come. I know it's hard to visualize, but yeah, around the the A field instead of going down the hill toward the B field, the bottom oh. cut across and then connect up with the walkway that's already there at the softball field, and then go back up toward the uh, somehow back toward the disc golf course, you know, toward the pickleball courts. It'd be about a mile loop. I'd say maybe a mile, maybe a mile and a half. That's nice. Yeah. No, well, I mean, right now I, I was like divided from point A to point B. I'm, I'm not being no, if you no, 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 I, I used to do that. I used to go down US one and head out to Saybrook, whatever, right. just to get somewhere, like you said. Right. Oh, but so. I don't think it's safe anymore to do so. Okay. Now, the big thing I do is I go to Hem and Asset and I do multiple loops there. Okay. You know, which does get a little boring to keep going around yeah. the ground, but it's the only way to get some miles. Okay. So. And this we we keep thinking more for the kids, uh, you know. Except in right, you know, your neighborhood, you know, some of them are pretty safe to bike in, right? Or, and some are, I, and I, some I, are. You okay, know, so. I see that. My other second question though is, what do we do about the people who are hiking? Is this going to be separate from the people who hike because they're not going to want to see no, X Columbine? But, but it's going to be in um, a lot of it's going to be around the field, okay. Where there's no path for hiking right now, okay. And then. The one thing we're talking about doing now from the field up to this golf is one trail. You know, so yeah, there would be hikers on that trail. And eventually we would like to get up to Baldwin School so kids could, you know, commute from one side of town to the other somewhere. And that would probably be one trail. So there would be a very small percentage of the trails that are there that would have bikes as well as hikers. Or strollers. And we just well have to wind them up enough so that people right. can do walk and right. Yeah. So I'm just curious and apologize if I missed this as well. This um, proposal for the more paths, is that something that was already in a plan in someone's head for parks and recreation? It's in our five-year capital plan. Okay. okay. No dollar amount because when I presented the capital plan here and then we presented to the right. uh, board of selectmen, um, <laughs> we did, this all, I think I met with the, the committee maybe a week before the budget was put in. So there's no way we had time to uh, or two weeks before to get a dollar amount. Okay. So we put it in with no dollars as a placeholder. But uh, you'll remember, Lauren, when we presented it to the Board of Selectmen, a lot of heads were not, nodding like in support of this. Because not only the bikers, we talked about handicapped accessibility. Right. Somebody in a wheelchair can't go in the woods. Right. So now we create a trail that's maybe a quarter mile long that somebody in a wheelchair or parents with young kids in a stroller right. or carriage could take them through a walk through the woods. There's no opportunity for that in town right now. And there were towns who have it. West Hartford, is it West Hartford? Yeah, West Hartford has one. Uh, there are other communities who have this. Um, in short, of course, is the Canal Trail that goes to Hamden, Chester, that's right. you know, similar, uh, you know, all that's more of a linear trail. But um, it's an opportunity that doesn't exist right now for a lot of people. And it's so dedicated not. just for that. Yeah. And, and what's that? Would we pave it? That hasn't been decided yet, whether it would be paved or maybe embossed stone in the pavement. Um, there's different things in cost, yeah. upfront cost, and then maintenance cost, depending yeah. on the surface. Yeah. So that has to be decided. Yeah. So Shoreline Greenway Trail is looking to support this. And since it's in the budget a couple of years out, our idea was, well, if we can help raise some grant money now, we right. could get started with the design of it. Because there's a lot to do with the design of these things. And then they would have to go to wetlands if it if the proposal is to go there, some of that area is kind of steep, so we're not quite sure how that would work either. So, you know, the sooner That's we can get started, the better. Lawrence? Yeah, Rick brought up a good point. I, I spent some time, my daughter was up in uh, Cheshire, but there's on the rail trail there, there's bicyclists, there's everybody and their brother, carriage, strollers, bicycles, mm -hmm. runners, right? They, they get along fine. And also, West. West it's really wide. Yeah, yeah. It's and even fun. Westwood, though, I mean, uh, Westwoods, they allow bikes, uh, mountain bikes in there. Mountain bikes, right. Yeah, mountain bikes. So it's, and they're just regular trails. So they, it seemed right. like they get along fine with the mountain bikers and, and the hikers in there. It doesn't seem like this. No, that we're going to get major league bikers in that mine. No, probably not. You know, no. <laughs> but, you know we're no, this having... isn't something that they'd probably be interested in. Yeah. And, and I've been on Westwoods on hikes when mountain bikers have come through. And just because of the terrain that it is, they're going pretty slow. Yeah. You know, yeah. Really, not like they not like when you go to have an acid and you yeah. get some bikes yeah. that are yeah. whizzing by. Yeah. In my, my opinion, you put that in there, it's uh, trust me, it's gonna get a lot of use. Especially if you can go over through Baldwin. 
Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and I agree with all that positive. I'm just asking questions yeah, about sure. understanding how this is going to work because it's in our capital plan and like who's, who's when designing it or who's, I, I'm just, I'm not understanding. I get the point. It's who's great to have help for it's great. Uh, Right. Yes. For help writing the grants and, and getting all of that money, but I guess I'm unsure what the Shore Lane Greenway Trail, like how they'll be part of it during it, during um, like when it's like built the or, design and, or the design and the upkeep, or I'm just a little unsure. Right. Well, it's, in the way it's town it's property presented. and it's going to be all the town yeah. responsibility. Okay. And pretty much everything we've done in other towns. The town owns it, the town designs it, the town does it. We have input. I mean, that's all we're looking to do is to just Maybe give suggestions on different things. Really we try to push it along as, right. as much as anything. Um, but we're not gonna be in control of it by any means. Honestly, the reason I was asking is because when you said, well, it hasn't been designed, so I was thinking it was something that the Shoreline Greenway Trail had taken on to manage the project, no. and I wasn't sure. No. I mean, that we'll, we'll do whatever we can to help, yeah. but it's up to the town. And who would maintain it? Who the town. Park and Rec or, or public? I mean, that, I mean, are we taking on a, another? It probably would be Park and Rec because we maintain it now. Because it would be on Bittner and West Park. Right. Right. I mean, we don't maintain those trails. Well, yeah, and there's not a lot of maintenance. But in other towns on other trails that we do have, a lot of times we have work parties that go out. Um, a big thing is weeding on some of them. Go out maybe once a month and do some weeding. Uh, they do some plantings to make them look pretty in some areas. Yeah, Brad, so, please don't pave it. That's a whole. That's a whole host of problems. Lawrence, we'll okay. just <laughs> please <laughs> don't pave it. No, we have to. If, you, if you're talking about making it handicapped accessible, you kind of have to do something. No, you, I mean, I've been at plenty of paths. If you stone dust it, it's fine. Yeah. wheelchairs, bicycle, or whatever. Yeah. Okay, so right now, but right now, we're just talking about supporting about it, so. the support and the plan. And I have a question, which I probably should have asked you when we sat down and talked about it. Is why? What are they getting at? This? Like, are they expecting the broad, the Greenway Trail did this for us accolades, yeah. or? I know I'm a little cynical here, so I just want to know yeah, what fine. I'm worried fine. about. We, you know, PR, I would think, right? Um, well, we would like to get a little PR, but we yeah. only want to get biking for kids. Point. Okay, yeah. so their yeah. goal is and, that. And um, probably a couple of years ago, we met with the State uh, Safe Street group, yeah. mm -hmm. and we actually went up to Bidner with them, and we walked the property with them at that time, but. Um, Nothing went forward really from that, but we try to work with them as well okay. because we just want biking. And most of us right now have grandchildren. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't live in town, but you know, sometimes they do visit, and yeah. it would be nice to have a place where they could go biking or we could bike with them. Or even like again, just walking. You know, now that they're putting the sidewalks on on Long yeah. Hill Road, it'd be nice to be able to walk up to Baldwin and just walk across to uh, again. Yeah. And, yeah. and well, people who are watching games yeah. need to be fun. take that child for a walk in the stroller right. to get it to sleep and they can do it. Right. You know, and the brother or sister of someone who's in a game could, you know, they don't want to watch their sibling yeah. play the whole time and twice a week or whatever, you know, they'll have something to yeah. do. All right. So none of this is just going to, it's going to just happen. That's We're just, right now, the motion is Plan. to approve. They're working with us to help us apply for grants. Right. And, and the timing of it is there's some webinars coming up this month. And, and you've got a grant. Back. Tomorrow is one of the first ones. Um, okay. And then I think grants or applications are due like in March. So, so okay. So I'll call the question, Elizabeth. I'll call the question. We're well, actually right. looking for a public so, partnership with Parks and yeah. Okay. To officially allow us to help. Okay. Are we done discussing? So we've had the motion. Which we give a copy of that to Kathy okay. as well. We've had a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. Brad, Brad, thank you for doing that. No, thank you for supporting it. Thank you. And thank you all for your discussion and yeah, your questions. questions. And I apologize. Yeah. I guess it was when you presented it at the budget, the capital budget. I thought we, I had heard it last month here and I was telling Deb, no, we heard it. Yeah. We was here at the meeting. So I apologize. All right, let's make sure okay. you lose your mind. I know, I didn't feel like I was late, but. Okay, yeah. so let's move along. Um, senior meal fee, it has been proposed to raise the price by 50 cents. 
Um, and I guess if Rick had a word with Terry, we've already raised it a dollar in the last year. And didn't we just do that? Yeah, yeah, we did. Long we did. Ago. Um, we did, but but most people, a lot of people, not most, some people will just say keep the fifty cents. Yeah. Okay. We we still are in a in a hole, and quite honestly, dealing with all these quarters is, you know, when you have one hundred and twenty people come and who's giving you fifty cents and who's giving you the you know a dollar and I mean it's just like, can we just do five and six dollars and get this over with? Because we sit there trying to make change and who's yelling and it's chaotic. Okay, bros, this is for breakfast and lunch? No, just this is just lunch. Okay, lunch is what now? Right now, it's four fifty during the week, yeah. five fifty on Friday, and $6 on special occasions. Are they just making 50 cents on everything? Uh, no, I would propose five and six. Five and six. Yeah. So wait, would still special occasions be six or seven? You know what? I think the special ones would have to be up to Terry because she knows what, what, you know, I mean, what, I mean, the birthday ones we have, the, we have the entertainment. Those are, those would stay at six. So if she gets something really special going on, you know, dancing, whatever, I think it's up to Terry to then set the, the price on that. So I, I got some facts and figures for her just so, so you know, we are doing really, really well compared to in the past. Um, remember, we used to get a twenty-seven thousand dollars subsidy. We thought we thought we we're going to be somewhere between fifty to ninety thousand dollars in the hole. Right now, for five months, we're only three thousand dollars in the hole. She figured out we're losing about thirteen cents a meal, so we're almost breaking even right now. And the reason for that, a number of things. One is um, Rotary. You talked about Rotary is here, you know, four times uh, a month. Terry calls them contracted services. So contract, what meaning somebody's has an agreement are coming in. It's also uh, SIL when we do SIL, they have a they pay for the lunches. Um, the breakfast, um, pre COVID, are we are netting about you know, 18,000 from on breakfast net during COVID and right after we're, we're getting 10 or 12,000. So we, we went way down right now. We're part of probably being close to 24 25,000 dollars net for breakfast so the breakfast always helps subsidize yeah lunch. they really help us if you remember breakfast for anybody anybody come out breakfast and we make money on breakfast we make good money when rotary's here because they, they pay you know a good amount for it we probably make four or five dollars the time we have a breakfast for them so we, which is before turn five thousand is profit net profit for breakfast yeah okay. but like net revenue <laughs> for breakfast yeah, yeah. Um, that, of course, that doesn't count salary because so they're in. Yes, yeah, right. it's just, uh, okay. And the breakfast always helps subsidize the lunch. That was always yeah. the intention of it. Yeah. That's why we started doing it. And when I first had a conversation with uh, uh, Dawn Jackson from Rotary about coming here and have Rotary come here, it was a win 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 for everybody. Because I, I told her this will help subsidize the senior meals for Rotary, the place that we're going to be going to, where it's going to go up to $25 for lunch, here it's 15 yeah, we still probably make eight to ten dollars, eight dollars anyway. We net, uh, you know, on the lunch for us. So, a lot of things, reasons that we're doing very, very well with it. Um, so, see, uh, we're estimating um, uh, probably forty six to forty eight thousand meals uh, this year. It keeps going up. You look at a report every month. Every month, it's, it's more and more people. Meals, yeah. meals, you know. Remember, Meals on Wheels pays us. <laughs> those meals, That's right. they pay a little less. So here's the thing, if we're going to go up, we have to let Meals on Wheels know because they have the budget for that, right? Because right? Um, they're about 25 cents less because they're paying for paper plates and, you know, the packing stuff that seniors here don't have to pay for. They have to buy that stuff. So we always, we figured, Larry figured out it's about 25 cents roughly uh, that we reduce. They're not getting the place masks, the plastic wear and all that stuff. So, um, so we always charge them 25 cents less. So I think that we're going to go up. If there's them, we got to make sure they are aware of it because it's got to go up for them too. And, and maybe make it in effect July or something, you know, to give them time to budget for it. And what does Terry think about this? <laughs> she doesn't think we need to go up because, well, because again, we're only losing 13 cents. And so, you know, over the course of a year, we're, it's going to be seven or eight thousand dollars that we're losing that get, gets covered by the program account. Um, so again, we can't spend that pound fast enough. <laughs> so she's against it. I will say she's against it because I understand she understands your concern too, uh, Rose. But 
we know they need to do it because we got to rate because we need to make money on it. You know, we've always known when you have to subsidize it. And like I said, we used to get $27,000 for the town, they take an audit budget, the subsidy now comes out of the program account. And based, based on current numbers for five months, we're probably looking at seven or $8,000 that will, will be in the hole that we'd have to subsidize. So if we go 25 cents or go 50 cents, then we, we may have a- You may break even. Yeah. yeah. Plus. I don't think we'd make money, but- All right. So the question for the commission is, um, I think we should take on board your comment about the timing of it because of meals on wheels. So does the commission think that we should increase it by 50 cents as Rose had said, and do this probably in July time so we give Meals on Wheels a chance to put it in their budget? Well, or do they not? Do it sooner, but that only charge Meals on Wheels the extra in July. What do you think? There's a thought. And the reasoning being is the quarters. It's that it's dealing with quarters. So it's also the fact that we do lose money. As well as so. I'm a little confused. Forgive me if I'm not understanding. The town is now not subsidizing anything for it? No. Yeah. Yeah. But, but not for the meal product. Pay for the what? They took that out of the budget last year. Yeah. It comes out of our program account. Our breakfast subsidizes it and then it comes out of our program account. So what would happen if, I mean, I can only see this increasing the need. What happens two, three years from now when we're, we're in a big, big hole because of- I asked that in Mary Jane. Mary Jane? Mary, Mary, Jane. Jane. Mary, Mary Jane. Jane, I have a problem. She, they'll cover it. It, they'll, it will be back in the budget, the subsidy. That's never gonna go away. But because of our program account, they said, no, they're not gonna subsidize it anymore. It had to come from there. And that was all last year, that whole discussion. Yeah, I didn't cover that. So that's why I want a little bit of a We did discuss review. that, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And I think I questioned it back then because I was like, why would you not at least put two or three thousand dollars subsidized just to keep it safe? Item. Well, we can't they took it away, we can't get it back. So they there's nothing we can do about it. Thank you. But if we increase it now to five and six dollars, then we're totally in the Black, then that's really good. And yes. then maybe we never have to increase it for, right. for, a, while. for a while. Yeah. For a while. For a long while. Fine for three, four, or five years. You know? Okay. So the table, so what's on so the Larry, table now, Clarence? Rose, if you could repeat. So the, it, what's going to go from four? It's 450 now. Which one is that? Breakfast. Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday are 450. And that's, that's lunch. Lunch. Okay. I'm only talking lunch. And they'll go to five. That would be $5. Okay. Friday's lunch is generally five fifty, and that would go to six dollars. Okay. And then every now and then there's something really special, but that Terry would decide what what to charge for those. Okay. The Christmas lunch. What's the Christmas lunch? Is that a six one six dollar? Is that remember. more? Why is Friday lunch more? Just curious. Why is Friday's lunch more? Um, it's it's generally a more elaborate. It's 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 pot, um, roast, for example. pot roast, pork roast, turkey. I mean, it's not pasta. Do you know? It's not a salad. It's you know, it's it's a more substantial meal. Often there's birthday the birth birthday lunch. You know, we get cake. It's still a great. Um, it's like dinner. Go ahead, Lawrence. Yeah. So does, does Terry determine the special lunch is what it's going to be at that time? Well, I'm not, like a month ahead of time, yeah. Oh, so she, okay, it's, it, that's when it's determined. What, it, what yeah, it, it, when you get the the uh, the senior um, newsletter, newsletter <laughs> the whole all the lunches for the month are already planned out. Yeah, yeah. In oh, there, yeah, yeah. And if they're a special price, the price is in there as yeah. well. So people know way ahead of time. So okay. Terry determines. So we've never price. determined what those prices are. Terry. No, always Terry's always had the discretion. Yeah. 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 So, so, so what's on the table now is that we up it immediately, except for meals. Well, I, would, I would give them a month to, to get used to the idea. We put a little bit <laughs> of okay. yeah. the newsletter. So, it, you know, it's not going to happen. Do you think that there's any seniors that are going to have a problem with 50 cents? No, I do not. However, okay. if there are seniors who do have a problem, Terry is well aware and, okay. and they will be taken care of. Okay. 
she has that's part of the reason we have she knows her. she knows exactly what's 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 up and if somebody is going to have problems they're never turned away trust me perfect okay so let's go back so we can move forward the five dot the the increase would begin within a month or two or great or, or something and then we'll also put it toward no probably april she's got to get Yes, okay. give them notice. So, so I would April say maybe 1st, April 1st. April 1st. And Meals on Wheels, July 1st? Yeah, I'd say so. Okay. So does the commission agree with that or disagree with that? And you can have either answer. There's no wrong answer. I agree with that, but I but I always want it to remain transparent. Why it's being raised. To people that are coming if someone asks why, is, I want it to be very transparent as always as to why. We, we tell them. Yeah. yeah, because it's, it's saying, you know, it's, it's because the meals, the cost of meals have gone up. And plus, it's it's, it's a lot easier to handle the change. That's why. <laughs> I mean, what a really work. <laughs> really. So, and it's a hardship, then a way that needs to be addressed with anybody. All right. So, are we are we good with that? All right. So, should we say all in favor of that? Sure. Yes. Yes. Aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. You're all looking at me. You waiting for me to go first? <laughs> okay. We're good. All right. I do. I do actually have a question. I know we just all approved this, but the meals on wheels part is confusing me. That we're just moving it up twenty five cents and not talking about what that does. I don't. Or, but it was in their budget. Like I'm not sure how that works. Why? They. they their budget pretty much goes. I think by calendar year. Yeah. So maybe July might be a little hard for them, but we we can certainly talk to them about it. But, um, so. They have to then either go back and charge their people more, or they raise more money to because they have a sliding scale. Some people pay very little. I think the most anybody pays for them is five dollars. Right. Even so it's based on then their budget. So they may not actually be charging other people because I just thought we were working out whether to charge people five or six, but not thinking about oh, it's going to go up twenty five cents for. No, so bills will bill pays just a different. They, they, they pay a bill monthly. Way of billing. Okay. Yeah. Terry bills them. Larry gives Terry that you know the whole thing, but then Larry okay. Terry bills them, and they pay monthly whatever the amount is that, uh, that she bills them. So if I get it right, so we're talking about seniors, April first, meals and wheels, July first. Well, um, unless unless the July first is going to cause an issue. Uh, uh, Christy's here. Christy Berger from Meals. She's here every day. I'll okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. They go. They go. She's twenty five. They go half. Okay. Moving forward, <laughs> pickleball reservation policy. So nothing new on that, but we had a lot of conversation about the whole group that meets out there. Uh, I, I met with uh, Stephanie Blaha, who runs all of our pickleball program. We discussed it some. Um, she was going to write up some of her thoughts on it, which I have got idea. Uh, Terry, Terry and I met with her, and I asked one, yeah. either one, contact Madison, Brantford to see what, what their policies are, what are they doing right now? Not that we have to follow what everybody else does, but let's just find out. Um, and uh, uh, if they have team reach, how are they, how are they working with that? So one, one of the many conversations Pam and I had on uh, Saturday, and she has some thoughts about pickleball policy. So I, I, I decided not to do anything yet, so why would I start something? She comes in new, has, may have totally new ideas. I thought it was better to wait rather than me in the last two weeks come up with something Since different. Um, move that up under unfinished yeah. business and put it yeah. on the agenda for next time. Um, but I think it just made no, more sense. I've been on vacation for a week and a half, so I don't know if Terry and she and I, I was just like up to hear what stuff when they said. Um, I, I didn't talk to her about this meal stuff until I was e eating some soup at about six o'clock tonight and <laughs> talked with her about it. So um, we, didn't, we didn't have any chance to, to discuss all this today. Okay. And finally on the agenda is the disc golf statistics. And you see we've got this yes. in your yeah. agenda and Rick just thought it was interesting um, to put it in. Yeah, so Todd, Todd gave me this. I thought, you know, this would be good for the commission to see this. Um, so um, so it, it, don't get yeah. scared by all those graphs. There. The main thing, you look at... Um, uh, one month, <clears throat> the largest number of rounds was 758 rounds in a month. That's a lot. That's a lot. The small was 33, but that was like when we first opened it in uh, 2019, I think. <clears throat> so, 
think the average, uh, the average is about 361, 372, or somewhere in there. So, so the point though of this is this is something called UDISC. It's an app that people get on their phone. Only if you have the app, it's just recorded. So all of this is going on pickleball. We're not even in this number. So the number is way more than what this is. I can guarantee you that because a lot of people are not on UDISC. So UDISC is this, it's this national app. When you go, you record that, hey, I'm playing at Bittner Disc Golf Course today. Um, and it actually measures your steps, how many steps you took. Um, yes. it measures, you can record your score on there. It also tells you how many people played on the professional, the long course versus the short sure. course. And, and I can tell you, I mean, the, the short course, of course, of course, because it's the recreational course gets way more use. I mean, it might have 300 and something people. The long course might have 10, you know, for the month. Yeah. Um, and that's one thing, you know, I'll say this, when the, the designer initially wanted to go with a long course, I said, no, you got to make it recreational so the average person can have success on it. If you're pl playing on a course that it's a 900 foot line, the average person is going to take 10 throws to get there. They're not going to get close to par. So that's why we, we designed it initially the way it is. But then we went with the long course for the pro, more pro level people, which is good because there are, you know, he's done some pro tournaments and had 72 people sign up for it. So um, it's good that we have that. But, but the majority of people play the recreational course. So I'm glad that we, we uh, went that way. But this, this is only people who are on UDISC. Like I said, you're not so, on UDISC. So we can assume that more people use this than way, yeah, that's way more, way more people use than the app. Somehow, I mean, is there something posted there about UDISC? How would you know? Like, I have people in my family who go play, but I never heard about UDISC before. Maybe they're just serious players. Or There's an app somewhere. I don't know if you get it. Go like the Connecticut Disc Golf. It's interesting if you like encourage Todd people to do it just for our purposes to know who's playing. You know, Todd and Tony are on it. They they know how to. Yeah. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I just go play for you. Just go play for the. Fun. So you don't use it either. You. I don't. Know. Oh, I'm just curious. I never heard of it. That's what I'm being concerned. Are you concerned about the drop off, John? The drop off? Well, it's yeah. winter. Well, no, it's, it goes, it looks like 2023 was way lower than any other year before. Uh, a lot of it could be weather. Remember, um, well, it's, 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 it's rain every, every weekend. weekend. It's every weekend. Every weekend. So, yeah. Right? And that's why yes. people mostly think every. I think 10 out of 11 weekends are right. So it's so so it's it's during, like every other month. And also, yeah. some of this is during COVID, too. You know, it goes every other month. 19 to 20. But 20 to 20 is COVID. I know that, but that's 2020. Yeah. yeah. 21 to 21. Right. COVID, 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 we're allowed out, out, but not in it. <laughs> but it is true. This summer, like every Saturday. Yeah. I mean, it looks like these are, are months. Like, if you look at 2022, that's January of 22. So the COVID is playing over. It's every other month. It looks like, but I just, well, it's just presented out of interest. Yeah. Okay. And so, yeah, it was well worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's why we're talking about whether or not it's it <laughs> really been everything we've been trying to All right. That was the last thing on our agenda. So, we'll call now, wait, 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 I do have one more thing. I'm sorry. There's always one. I think there's always one. No, I've I've had I had a couple of people, and I think we need to talk about this. So I'm throwing it out now so that we can start to talk about it. I've had a couple of people um, throughout the year who have been a little bit upset, and I think we talked about this once about uh, in town registration and out of town registration. They call up to register for a program, find out that they're put on a wait list, only to find out that people from out of town have already beat them to the telephone or the computer or whatever. Um, and they feel they feel that this isn't right. I've had about two or three people with two or three different um, different programs say this to me. You know, uh, some of the card flip, you know, just different ones. And I think we need to look at this. And and uh, I know Terry says, well, we always fit them in. Well, but on the other hand, so Rose, we actually made a change. We still oh. affected the last newsletter, so residents register a week before non-residents. So oh, I didn't see that. Yeah, this is. Before something for all our programs? Well, we're starting with seniors because that's where we've had some issues. I think some of the seniors have trouble getting in some things. I haven't heard too much from the non seniors population. I, I think it should be a department wide policy. It used to be, it changed. It be, I, um, I, I think it's a good idea. But we did make it, we started with seniors uh, either this month or oh, all right, I think it's the okay. most recent newsletter. 
So, because I think the first of the month, they all come in to sign up for the new trips and everything. Mm -hmm. So the residents get first shot at it. Good. We okay. can start. All right, good. That, oh, that, that'll make the point. Yeah, and I, I think that the other issue that was discussed or there, there are people who have been taking the fitness classes here for, yeah. can I say 15 years or 20 years? And they've been regulars all that time and they're not in town. And if they get thrown off, it, it almost seems unfair to them as well. So it's, I don't mean to, to no, no, I'm, I'm to not. do that. I mean, I think just think we should let our, our, our Guilford residents feel comfortable that they're going to get into the program. And then we either expand it, add the extra people. I mean, there's ways of dealing with it, mm -hmm. but I think we should let our Guilford people feel like they can have access to the programs before we start to worry about fitting in extra people. Yep. Or getting new instructors or whatever we have to do. Wait, how do they verify it? Um, in town, out of town, how do they do that? Um, it, it could be driver's license, uh, which isn't always accurate because somebody could have just moved here from Ohio and they haven't changed their license. So they have to, have to present their driver's license? So it could be driver's license or a piece of mail or something. Um, but they do, they do. Cases, our staff know most of these people already yeah, anyway. But they do have to present something if, if they don't know. If they don't know them, yes. When you, sign up, when you sign up for a program on the application, it asks for your address. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you That's could block, but it, it does ask for you. Yeah, my question is, though, do you actually require somebody to say, okay, prove that you live yeah. where you say you live? If there's a question, we can say. Question. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Because I know the online registration has been for years. So, like, if you signed up online in 1990, yeah. it still shows you as a Gilbert resident. You're still a Gilbert resident. You know. But it's, yeah, what you're saying, Lord, too, though, I mean, I, I get it. They've been the dog for the last 15 years, but like, they don't live in town. They don't pay taxes. I mean, it's kind of like tough luck. You know what I mean, like yeah, it can I think be, it's, it hates me harsh. I mean, we get them. So we're, we're yeah. Hopefully yeah. that won't become a problem. They've already yeah. done the change, and yes, I think that's maybe work on department wide going forward. Well, I'm not telling you how to do your job. <laughs> I'm all, I'm the one here trying to keep us moving. Well, that's my standard. Yeah, yeah. Probably was. I was actually yeah, surprised when it came up as something that wasn't happening because I feel like I remember. I don't know when did it change to not being the I case because I feel like the, I remember yeah. being told that residents were two There's weeks wild. later or something. Yeah. Maybe that was just camp or I, I don't know what was going on. Over time, we just said things like camp. We started taking non-residents, yeah. and, and, and we weren't ever closing anybody out. So that, for example, camp just like everybody signed. So everyone up could sign up because you knew you'd add no people. Out anyway, yeah. So um, I think it's definitely worth revisiting. I think it's a, a positive thing to, to do that. Uh, as I said, we we started out with seniors. Um, it, it's just the trips that are pretty much every month right now with the newsletter. So um, <laughs> we're, we're starting it. Thank you. So okay. before we close, if I can just make a sort of a closing comment, how much I've enjoyed working with. Thank you. I think all of you came to my uh, retirement party. Thank you all for coming. It was a very special night. I felt very, very humble, very honored. Um, and uh, as I said to Pam, this is a tremendous commission. So it's very supportive. We have a great staff, right? I told you all this, right? Yeah. Our staff is very talented. Um, she can rely on them to, to do what they do. Um, the, the committee did a great job and who they selected Pam will, will be a good good leader. Um, as we talked, I was asking her, what, you know, what's your leadership style? She said, I always think, I had the big smile on my face and I said, we're clones of each other. <laughs> I mean, you're very similar. So I, and I, I met with the staff today and I said, the transition for you, staff, is going to be very simple because Pam is very similar to her style as mine. She's not going to come in cracking a whip or you know, leaning over your shoulder. Um, she's going to expect you know how to do your job. You're going to do it. And I expect you to continue to do it for her what you did for me. Not for me, for the town. Nobody did it for me. It was for the town. Um, so um, uh, I think the, the commission, the department is going to be in really good hands. Um, and uh, I've just been very honored for these 32 years to be in a position I've been in. And, and I think we need to thank you again. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Again. Thank it's you. been great. Really? Yeah. It's been a long time. Great. Yeah. Forever. Yeah. You will be missed. Will be. Definitely. I never thought you would retire. I was like, he's going to be, when I first met you, I'm like, he's going to be no. one of those people that is never going to retire. <laughs> that was a joke in the interview room. <laughs> we never thought he'd do it. <laughs>
It was in every every interview. We gave. So, <laughs> all right. So on that, if there's nothing on else, that note, I go for adjournment. Okay. At uh, what time? It's seven feet. Not my best work, but not that. Like to know that Stop the Zoom. Hours. Oh, okay. Wow. Oh, I don't know. 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 I don't there's what they used to run longer, but we've learned like when we get the report, they don't have to cheap passion, they don't have.